How bad will a bullet fly if you make it completely out of bounds? Well, today on Talflator Mouse, we're going to find out. Yeah, that's a good sign. Hello, this is Jeff. I hope you're having a good day. Today we have a really interesting experiment to bring you. These test samples come all the way from St. Petersburg, Russia from our good friend Alexei Lavrov. These bullets measure 67 caliber or around 17 millimeters in diameter. That's pretty big. Be sure to check out Alexei's channel to find out what new projects he may be working on. The big out of balance bullet is a variant of the other designs that Alexei has sent us called the extremely Russian penetrators in a three and floor flute design. It kind of looks like a bullet with a big bite taken out of it. The extremely Russian penetrators perform very well. These are essentially scaled up copies of Lehigh Defense's extreme penetrator bullets. And boy did those things work well. One of the few designs that ever penetrated our 30 pound lead plate. The weight of these bullets is about 34.3 grams, which is only about one gram lighter than the extremely Russian penetrator. Well, let's head out to the test facility and see if we can hit the broadside of a barn with these very odd bullets. Welcome back, Calflator folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you on a foggy day in Central California. Hey, um, you're used to some half-ass hijinks on this show, but today we have a half brass slug. It's not completely half brass. You're going to see this here on Jeff's tabletop, but Alexei Lavrov from Russia has uh, sent over, you've seen some of his creations before where he has scalloped out some rounds and made some some uh, Phillips screwdriver looking rounds. The by extremely Russian penetrator. Yeah, the extremely penetrating Russian or something <laughs> like that. Or, well, that might have been a different movie. Um, he, he has, uh, he scooped away essentially half of a brass slug and the, the objective behind this is to an in, intentionally cause um, kind of a disrupted flight pattern and see how these things would work if they're completely off balance. So what was your acronym? The the big the old... Big out of balance bullet. Out of balance, the, the boob? Oh, I didn't realize it. Didn't. Oh, yeah, I okay. bet that was a surprise. <laughs> so we're gonna try these things and see what they do. Um, they're obviously designed to be shot from a rifled bore so that they're spinning but we're also gonna try, we've got a lot of them, so we're gonna try some from a smooth bore and see what they do when they're completely uh, unstabilized. Yeah. And uh, just see what they do. Um, we don't know. That big giant scoop out of the middle of that thing, is it gonna fly up in a big giant arc and make, <laughs> like a make boomerang? loop-de-loops all the way down to the range? <laughs> I don't know. So put your theory I have no below. idea what these are gonna do. If, it's, yeah. Will they still be accurate, you know? Well, we shoot perfect slugs out here that are all over the place. Right, right. So maybe if we have an imperfect slug. <laughs> that'll, it'll, it'll counteract your bad act sure. aiming, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. It'll fly around <laughs> the, our site out here and hit exactly on the little blue mark down yeah. Speaking of which, Brandon Downrange just sent me a text. Who's that? that that's Doug's cousin, Brandon. Oh, okay. Uh, he just sent me a text, though, and said to get busy, get, get going with this, and shut my yap hole. Okay, test one. No spin at all. Aim it at the blue tape. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Ooh, boy. Here we go. Ooh, boy. Okay, that's a good sign. Decent recoil. All I can say is what a surprise. I did not expect to see this at all. Let's take a closer look and see what's going on. As you can see, the bullet has hop up or backspin, and that backspin definitely has an influence on its trajectory. I mean, that's interesting, but I don't know if that's a desirable effect or not. It'd be very hard to know which direction this thing's gonna go. But we can see in this case, the direction of tumble is causing it to fly kind of high and right. Now, I suppose you could have some kind of control over the direction it's going up, down, left, or right, just by positioning the shell beforehand in the chamber, but still I think it would be very difficult to predict where it's going to actually hit. All right, you hit it. Oh, wee. It, little, it flew a little right. funky. I could see that on the high speed. So it was a little... Uh, it was just tumbling. Floppy. It was actually tumbling. I thought it would fly sideways. Pretty much the same as if I was to throw a football, but <laughs> yeah. look at that uh, deformation back there. Oof. And if I'm not mistaken, right over here to the right, it punched into this Kevlar and eh, tried to make it through. Wow. It's it's a couple of layers from the back, but... Uh, I thought it would just be on the surface of it. Oh. 100% pristine. <laughs> it just polished it. 
Yeah. And that's, I don't think Greg has seen what these actually look like no, yet. No, I have not. Yeah. I never know what I'm going to be shooting. You just tell me that, uh, yeah. close your eyes and pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Close your Try eyes. Try to explain it on the in, on the introduction of something right. that you have no idea what I'm... You guys think it's even. funny, but Jeff always just tells me, close your eyes and think of England, pull the trigger, and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> if, if you open your eyes and you still have a hand, hey, good times. <laughs> yep. So, Today I, re I kept both hands, and this cool little thing, uh, basically with some little bit of scuff marks on it, is just about in perfect condition. Yeah, it could be reshot. And people have said, why don't you reload it on, the, on site? And it's like, I don't know if YouTube would be okay with that, you know, showing how I loaded it. You know, I, yeah. I have to be really careful about things these days, you know. Okay, let's, let's try it through rifling now. All right, same target? Yeah. Okay, now, Full rifling. Will it be more accurate? Will it be more stable? How will, how will it fly? We don't know. Rifling makes everything better. <laughs> yep. Uh, maybe. Oh. oh, I think that went right through it. Maybe. Using rifling, we now have spin or angular momentum acting on the big out of balance bullet. Now we do have a somewhat stable flying bullet. It is flying nose first after all. But with the center of gravity so skewed, the flight of it is rather awkward looking. And of course the bullet is far from laser accurate. But because the bullet did impact the vest nose first, it did penetrate the vest. And we could see a noticeable difference between the amount of energy released on the dummy between the first shot and this second shot. Well, this is a little different. This thing completely wrapped up around the slug. However, it did not stop it. We could tell even when we shot it, there was some stuff flying out from the back of Brandon here. So we know that it went through. Let's see how accurate it was. Oh, looks like it hit right next to the tape. It looked like it was a little high and yeah, left. This one should have so been, right? Yeah. It had, the, it had that California ballistics. <laughs> <laughs> high and left. <laughs> that's, that's a good one, Jeff. I just thought of that. Yeah, I know. That's really cool. High, I get it. High and left <laughs> all right yeah so this uh punched through the kevlar up here on the top and you can see back here we know this is the fresh one because it's got little tiny orange bits of uh brandon's t-shirt on it look at that oh god t-shirt fibers in your kevlar vest is never a good sign or or, or kevlar in your chest cavity is yeah, never good never either a good sign either that was taught to us at the police academy <laughs> yeah you never want to look down and see kevlar inside your chest cavity um, one of these holes is, Doug, oh, there it is. That's Doug's newest hole. He's got like 18 t-shirts on. Yes. He's like Michael Stipe at the Grammys. But, uh, so all of these different t-shirt colors are coming through there. And then, woo-boo! Pay no attention to that one. That one's old, but look at this. There's some of his gooey bits flying right out the back. So we got a complete pass through. Oh, he said, let's go OG. <laughs> I don't okay. think that's how the phrase goes. So shut up and move thanks, on. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try on something else. Okay, we now have a target, I don't know, probably 22, 23 yards away or something like that. Sure. Let's see if these things are accurate enough to hit that. What did you say that guy's name was? Spongeworthy? Spongeworthy, Worthington, um, I don't know. Putting pants. Putting right. pants, okay. Okay. Wait. When you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Woo. Woo. At this range, we can see that the bullet is still traveling at a supersonic speed as observed by the shock waves being dragged along the ground. Now, surprisingly, the bullet was accurate enough to hit this target at this extended range. After all, if it was off by two or three inches at only 10 yards, at this distance, we would expect to see it off by four or maybe six inches. So it was a big surprise that it was this accurate. Okay, it was pretty accurate. <laughs> I yep. thought it would be all over the place, but. I did aim low, usually on fluid targets like this, I try to aim low so it blows it up. And uh, it did hit low. It appears by the little round mark there, entrance hole, that uh, it probably hit more or less nose first. Jeff said that what you can tell on the camera is that they're kind of going, they're staying nose first, but they're wobbling around. So uh, it's kind of changing its axis. It's you trying know? to find some kind of stasis there, but <laughs> it's hitting nose first 
apparently on this one and we know that it did once on the vest and then of course God only knows what it's ha happening back here it's ripping out the back with a lot of fluid so yeah but it hit sponge sponge worthy right about where we were aiming so although they're wobbly they're going pretty accurate so. yeah it's kind of surprising I thought they'd be all over they are yeah and that was 1367 according to that that was a good year yeah I got a wine from 1367 <laughs> <laughs> I think. If we didn't do the lead plate, you're gonna get a lot of comments saying, "Why didn't you do the lead plate?" So, <laughs> so what do we put up? That's what you get for reading the the, the uh, comments is yeah, knowing what your audience wants to see, right? You're like a trained monkey. You just you just <laughs> jump and bang your symbols at whatever they say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. All right, down there on the uh, red X. Okay, right in the center there. Here we go. We're back at 10 yards and here comes the bullet. The bullet is showing consistency at least in its weird oscillating flight characteristics. And the bullet did hit nose first, but we didn't get full penetration this time. Now let's take a look at the lead plate and try to determine what happened. So, impacted high and right from the little uh, red triangle that we drew here. But look at this thing, impacted sideways, despite impacting sideways, it had such mass and velocity that it just about Ooh. made it through our lead plate. This is the back, and it knocked off this giant chunk of spalling from right here, boop, which we found out here in the vest. Almost wanted to make it through. Sideways. Yeah. Well, it could have, it could have turned. We've I don't seen know. that happen before, where it actually turned. In... But this is this is the evidence I use for this. Oh, okay. If you can look right here, from right out here at the surface all the way down, you can see the little striations that actually yeah, that's true. match up with the little, yeah, what do you call those, gas seals? Yeah, it doesn't need them, but it has them. So it kind of looks like it hit sideways, also the holes oblong, and plowed its way down there and left these little skid marks on the way. Okay, so, that's a good evaluation. Eh, it's good as anything. <laughs> you just make shit up and it's on the internet, so it's true. It's true now. Okay, Greg's getting cocky now. He thinks he can hit the can of shaving cream. I think I can hit the middle can of shaving cream. Yeah, that's what we're aiming. That's what I'm focused on. So. All right, we'll we'll give it a try at yeah, least. Take your time and. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, oh seriously. Okay, a little wider target. Maybe a better chance of hitting it. You say whiter or whiter? Whiter. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go, right in the center. There you go. Looks like we got the one on the right. Center. There you go. Looks like we got the one on the right. Well, when all else fails, make the target a little wider and maybe you'll hit it. Now, these are certainly not the most accurate slugs we've ever tested, but we certainly didn't expect them to be anywhere near this accurate. I mean, you have this idea in your head what they're going to do, how they're going to perform, and sometimes the results are rather surprising. Last cloud target. They're pretty cool. They make th these. This should be pretty, uh, uh, pretty cool if he hits it. Yeah, I'm going to try for right in the center of all three of them, right where they come together. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Okay. Oh, it's a communist. Now, one of the surprises as a camera operator running a high speed camera was it was absolutely dark out that day, but the Kronos high speed camera really performed quite well under these conditions. I think you hit it, Greg. Well, yeah. So, I was aiming for this juncture down here. It was just slightly low, but if I really wanted to call it, check that out. <laughs> actually hit the we knew where you were aiming though. I'll see I was aiming there. Yeah. How about the ballistic joke gummy bear? Whoa! We could hit everything. He shot that vest there right out of the carrier. Whoa! Now here I'm running the high-speed camera at about 7,000 frames a second just to try to get a little more detail of how it's flying through the air. 
and it's actually good to know that we can run this high-speed camera at relatively high frame rates on a completely overcast foggy day and that'll help us produce content all the way through winter time messier and messier out here <laughs> it does so we hit down here kind of low on his little abdomen right next to his little bear pee pee um, it looks to me like without having seen the high-speed footage that the thing hit sideways like it was uh, kind of keyholing in here but just says it was more still nose nose front yeah it's it's semi-stable it's just it's kind of like what one of the scenarios in my head of what it was going to look like what being so out about out of balance yeah but i mean it made a nice little rectangular entrance there whatever it did little jelly slot there's a name for your girlfriend <laughs> um out here on the back we also have kind of a long narrow slice where it exited so it looks like it kind of, I don't know, whatever it did here in the front, it can, can copied on the back. The interesting thing was, though, it hit our vest. The vest was actually facing this way. It hit our vest. It went through. Now, this is a very thin piece of Kevlar. That's some old stuff. It's like from the 1990s, I think. Yeah. Disco was king. Roosevelt was president. <laughs> um, it blasted right through. You can tell because the Kevlar fibers are still very yellow. Old Kevlar fibers that have been hit in previous tests are all faded and yeah. dark. It was, a, it was a fresh area, though. Yeah, so that's a fresh what? area. Uh, you probably saw on the camera. Here's the other little piece inside, but you probably saw on the camera it went, it went, it tore the Kevlar right out of the black carrier. So, went flying everywhere. We were unable to recover the projectile. It's downrange somewhere. Uh, these things are, these have been tricky to try to capture, yeah. try to catch. If only we had a tarp or a heat-seeking... <laughs> giant Kevlar tarp. To... <laughs> a giant heat-seeking uh, thermal thermal magnifier. Yeah. Something like that. We, we would have been able to just search it out real easy. No, yeah, people uh, assume that the slugs are, are super hot, but they're really not. They're not. They, they get hot when, from heat of compression when you, when you slam them into something. Yeah. Just the heat of the... the it doesn't occur in the barrel. Yeah. As as found down here, we rarely ever burn ourselves on a slug. Um, you see other videos made by other shooters and his buddy that always pick up hot rounds uh, out of a pistol and a rifle. Those are completely different um, slugs because it's wrapped in a sabo and got all kinds of protection between it and the explosion behind it. Um, they're not often hot on their own. Well, so. it, the, the, the time it's, the dwell time that it's in contact with the burning powder is so small yeah. It doesn't have time to heat up, That's the, what I was say. Yeah. but the friction of the bullet going through the through the rifling is um, definitely going to deform it and create that heat of compression. Heat so, of compression. Yeah, it's like it's like it's 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 it's, it's kind of like you bend a piece of copper wire over and over, and it gets hot, right? Yep. Okay, it's kind of the same thing when a bullet smashes into something or is squeezing through a rifling, you know, the, through the bore. But these it's heat, it's heat. It's yeah. fake heat. It's after the fact heat. Yeah, that's what we bring to the party. Okay. After action. We've heat. been talking way too long. Let's shoot some ballistic Let's gel. Let's try some ballistic gel, and maybe our buddy uh, Justin Beavers will help us hold it up. Oh yeah, it's still dark out here. Uh, it's still foggy. It I think it's the cloud of locust actually that's blocking the sun. But <laughs> wrong. Well, you've got some wound tracks in there. I was going to try. Oh, okay, gotcha. See if I can't keep it maybe clear from those. <laughs> Justin was in the air for a minute and a half. Now let's take a look at the tremendous energy transfer hitting the ballistic gel and transferring that energy to the table. You can kind of understand how the table gets so beat up over time. The steel frames get bent and eventually we have to replace them every so often. And look at that slug twisting and tearing and cutting through that ballistic gel. That is one nasty wound track, folks. And it's not over yet. The tr energy transfer is just now hitting Justin Bieber. But here's something interesting. Look at that big bubble that formed there. What's up with that? All right. Is there anything to see there? Well, there is. <laughs> this is the bottom of the block. It, it hit over here low, which is, I was aiming low center. And it actually did pretty well with hitting low center. Uh, just to try and keep it out of the way of these other two old wound tracks. But look at this thing. It goes in here. I'm not sure if you can see that. 
it obviously was tumbling because that one track right there is like two and a half inches wide. <laughs> and then it spirals. You can kind of see it twisting here like a big old churro of death. <laughs> and then it, I love churros of death. Churros of death? They have those at Disneyland. <laughs> they only sell them towards the end of the night, though. Um, they exited down here on the end. We were unable to capture it on the or in the uh, Kevlar vest. But yeah, I think it, it skinned off the bulletproof fiberglass oh, yeah, there. That's new, huh? That's yeah. A new strike right there. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it slipped underneath the Kevlar. So, ah. Uh, if only you had a. These things are, have been difficult to catch. 200 by 200 foot tarp. Yeah. Yeah, these are the leprechaun rounds of <laughs> of the week. But I mean, that's a that's a pretty impressive wound track. It's I ugly. Don't know that I would uh, load these in my self-defense shotgun, but <laughs> were they to hit your soft tissue, that's a pretty mean little wound track right there. Yeah. And Justin Beavers was pretty impressed. He was doing planks on top and was unaware that the round <laughs> was coming, so. Kids love the Justin Beaver doll. Yeah. They, they love it. They love it. They can't get enough of it. Kids just love Justin Beaver. Yeah, yeah. Do they still oh, wait. love it? Hey, what's on the ground right behind you? Oh, oh my God. Wow. While we're, <laughs> while we're sitting here, I happen to look behind just feet about uh, 10 feet and we have one wrapped in Kevlar. I don't know if this is the one from this test. I don't know. Where else would it come from? I don't know. It probably is from this one. Oh, I can't believe you saw that. It's a You're little like, scuffed on the nose. A little scuffed, but really, I mean, that thing is just about perfect shape. Could be reloaded. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, we found, we got one, and that, that, this is the second one we found, so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Interesting experiment, you know, they were a little more accurate than I thought they would be. Yeah, they, although they were flying all over the place, their, their angle of attack was accurate. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Just enough mass that it was just, it was hard for them to deviate off course. I think it's time to finally recast that gel block. It's yeah. it's looking pretty rugged. The gel ball is looking rugged. The uh, it, every time we recast, it gets a little darker. So we try to get a few shots in it. The lead plate's looking pretty holy right now. Yeah, yeah. And our uh, lead plate caster is no longer with us. So yeah, he gave me this burner and the mold and all that stuff and the oh, little good. TFM branding iron oh, thing. Cool. So you yeah, can carry on the tradition of yeah, Andy's not, lead plate. Yeah. All right, well, we thank you guys for stopping by on this cloudy day. We hope you were at least entertained. I mean, if you saw something like this in a thumbnail, I certainly would want to click on it and see what the hell <laughs> that thing's going to do. Yeah, I, mean, I don't even know. I really didn't know, you know. It goes against all common sense that this thing would go anywhere we want it to. But exactly. It went pretty dang close. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of impressed. So thanks for stopping by. We're glad you guys liked it. Justin, thanks you. It's more people watch this video than went to his last concert. Hit smash that like button. No, never mind. Yeah, I, do all that stuff. Or don't. To, you can thumb it down if you smash. want, if that makes you feel better. They don't count the thumbs downs anymore, so you might as well go ahead and thumb it down. Oh, okay. YouTube I thought doesn't they, count thumb downs anymore. I thought they were still considered engagement. No. Well, they probably do, but they don't count them on the screen for you anymore. It's oh, yeah. Too demoralizing and for... I don't care. There's always there's always a few thumbs down, it's you know. Fair. It's like it's the everybody gets a trophy generation where we none of us can feel bad. So yeah. we can only have it's, thumbs ups, zero thumbs down. It's like ninety nine percent thumbs up, you know, and I yeah. appreciate people just anyone who takes the time to, to rate it at all. Absolutely. Thumbs up or thumbs down, because most people don't rate it at all. Right. What's up with people? So thanks for giving it a thumbs up, even if you didn't. Or and uh, if you if you liked it and, and a buddy of yours would like it copy it and share it over to your friend of yours too so. if you have a uh, you know a comment please post it because we're one of the few channels that read our comments and exactly we especially enjoy your ideas and your feedback especially if there's something we should have done you right did we that, forget something that's we did we, the lead plate we did the ballistic gel we oh i don't know what else is he a part of a toronto gang I believe he is. This is Free Britney. Well, his gang actually, oh. right? she just got out of uh, conservatorship jail. Are we so. going to finally stop hearing about her in the news now, or, maybe? No. I'm so tired of that. I don't think you're ever going to end up, you're never going to finish hearing about Britney, unfortunately. Yeah. All That's right. It. Well, we can shut up now. I know. We can shut up now. Uh, it's getting even darker out here, and uh, we've got to pack up a lot of stuff and clean up a whole. Uh, we've we got to pick up all that foam. Each one of those little phone pieces has to be picked up. Yeah. Leave. Next time you'll you watch, you'll see next video. They'll they'll all be picked up. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna get to it. 
you guys kick back or click over to a Grand Thumb video or whatever else you watch. We thank you guys for stopping by. <laughs> what is that? What's a Grand Thumb? Who even knows? He's wearing flannel like this guy, but uh, oh. way sexier than OG. Oh, okay. All right, thanks you guys for stopping by, and we will see you in the next video. Do it one more time.